Today we are going to talk about some of the improvements that were pushed uh, in the uh, April 2021 release. You have seen that the new schedule board has been rolled out uh, in the last year and we've been pushing uh, uh, changes uh, continuously on uh, different views. We started with uh, the hourly view uh, and then we pushed the daily view. And now in this release, we are going to push the changes on the weekly view and the monthly view. In each of these views, basically based on your business and uh, the duration of the work that you're trying to schedule, you would use different views in your schedule board. As a dispatcher, uh, most of the times uh, for your field service businesses, you would see that uh, the work orders are, uh, the duration of a work order is within a day or less than a day. So you typically use uh, use your hourly view or, uh, uh, or your daily view. But there are businesses uh, like in the manufacturing industry where uh, you would see the type of work uh, could last from a few minutes, like a 30 minute job to a few days and a few weeks as well. Like you could also see a three week job, a four week job for uh, uh, manufacturing uh, customers. Similarly, in the world of project, uh, uh, everything, all the project assignments and the bookings are in terms of a, uh, a few days to weeks to months. And, and there are even projects that go beyond a year as well. So it's not very uncommon for uh, the project managers and resource managers to schedule uh, the, or resource their projects uh, in advance for a year or so. So saying that, there are scenarios where your booking durations cross a few days and go into the uh, durations of weeks and months. You, your dispatchers, project managers, or your resource managers would be able to use the weekly view and the monthly view to create your bookings on the schedule board. So in this release, we've uh, added the uh, weekly view and monthly view to the list of uh, available views on the new schedule board. And Weekly view, as you see on the screen, you'd be able to see the uh, uh, the bookings pretty much on the on the grid uh, on the grid up here. But in case if you haven't uh, used the days view uh, in the past, there is a improvement that we have done where. Uh, in the old schedule board, if you have a 30 minute booking, uh, when you look at it at a weekly view or a month view, we are looking at it at a bird's eye view and 30 minutes in the grand scheme of a month is, is a very thin line of booking. Whereas with the new design, we've adopted uh, or inspired from Outlook's design of how the bookings would show up or your meetings show up in a monthly view where uh, even you book for a few minutes, you would still be able to see the stack of the bookings and uh, uh, see the readable information on each of those bookings. So that's the design that we've adopted in our weekly and monthly views as well. And now you'd be able to expand each of these resources or collapse them. You would still be able to uh, collapse all resources or expand all resources using this button so that you could see the bookings uh, being shown here. Now, just, just let's go ahead and create a simple booking where uh, you have a duration of uh, 45 hours and you could book them against, uh, uh, let's say a couple of weeks. You could drag and drop pretty much like uh, uh, that you are able to do it. And then uh, uh, you could load all of those hours and 40 uh, in, in that front load them into a week's time, or you could even choose multiple weeks to distribute that amount of work, uh, let's say evenly across two weeks of time. So you could go ahead and say click book, and then we would so show some information that the booking operation is in progress. Uh, once the booking creation is complete, uh, the booking information would be shown and that uh, the booking would be refreshed on the screen. And that's the booking that we just created. And we can see that the work order has been created uh, where now once your work order or uh, your uh, uh, by, uh, the booking is created for two weeks, you would be able to change the status as needed for your uh, 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 booking or you would be able to edit it if you need some uh, distrib redistribution of work across those weeks in, uh, uh, in the booking. So just say in, in a case where uh, you need to reduce a couple of hours from this booking, you could just say 20 hours and then uh, uh, redistribute them or add those two hours to a different week, then you could still do that uh, from here. And then 
you could see that the total duration of the booking has been decreased by one hour. And when you click on book, the increase in the booking duration of the week that we have uh, increased and uh, the decreased duration of uh, uh, the time that is added to the second week will be taking into effect based on these distribution methods. Uh, these these are the same booking methods that we have used in the old schedule board as well. We have not changed uh, the way the distribution works in these uh, uh, environments. And you could see that uh, Sherry's bookings have been reflected uh, to show that. Um, another minor improvement that we added is on the aggregates. Now we are also showing uh, the number of bookings that uh, the resource is holding for that duration. Um, for example, along with the total number of hours the resource is booked for in that duration of time, we are also showing the total number of bookings. So that improves the readability of uh, uh, the bookings that a resource is holding on. That's for that. And we've <coughs> we made another change where uh, uh, moving of the bookings is made slightly easier. In the past, if you have to move a booking on the weekly uh, or uh, hourly board, you would have to hold it and drag it to the bottom. And sometimes because uh, uh, because the way the bookings are uh, uh, held, uh, moving it to a resource who's at the bottom of the page slightly becomes difficult in some cases. Now what we did is uh, we've added uh, uh, a functionality similar to move bookings that were that existed in the old board where you can select a group of bookings and move them from one day to a, another day based on their uh, status. We have uh, a variant of that functionality here where you can just uh, target one booking and then move it to a different resource, different date or different start and time. Um, even, even the resource filtering, uh, we've, did, we've put in a little thought because uh, uh, we've heard feedback from the customers saying that, hey, sometimes it shows resources who are not even part of that tab, uh, which confuses us because uh, they end up going to a different business or a branch uh, for their time. So what we did is by default, you would only be able to see the resources on that tab first. But in case you need to look at uh, the re all the resources on the schedule board, then you can even choose uh, all resources. So I'm going to go choose uh, Crystal Robles, uh, reassign that to Crystal Robles. I could choose a different date. So let's say um, I choose a week later, uh, 3.29, and then I choose uh, the same start time. I could just just leave it, leave it that way. Uh, once you click update, that sends a, pro uh, a request and uh, the bookings would re get reassigned from uh, Sherry to Crystal. And once the request is complete, it would show us a notification that the request is complete. Um, so similarly, booking this has been moved from Sherry Casneda on 3.22 to Crystal Robles at 8 on 3.29, which is the next week. Uh, you could choose to continue to show this message or you can opt to not show this message again based on how you want to see. It is, it is a setting at a user level. Uh, if you disable it, it's not going to impact the other users. So you see that uh, the booking has been moved to Crystal. Uh, this is this is uh, sometimes is really helpful uh, when you have a very long booking that you have to drag all the way to the right or all the way to the bottom. Uh, this this kind this feature comes in handy uh, for that feature. Uh, so those are some of the actions that you could do. Uh, you could still do a drag and drop to a different resource to reassign this booking, uh, and you would be able to uh, reassign the, those bookings to Brady or any other resource uh, who's who's working on that uh, booking. Now you can see that uh, the booking has been reassigned to Brady up here. Uh, that's about weekly view. Similarly, monthly view, you would, uh, seem, you would see the similar functionalities in monthly view. You can create new bookings or uh, edit existing bookings or reassign the uh, existing bookings would, could be done through the schedule board and using the same functionality. So even in month view, you could still see those uh, 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 bookings showing up. Uh, another, so now that we spoke about some of the improvements that are made on the weekly view, let's go back to hourly view, where I could show some of the improvements uh, that we are putting for uh, uh, the hourly view as well. Now, when the first time you load your schedule board, uh, we've made an improvement that uh, you're always taken uh, the the current time of the day is shown in the blue line up here and in the past in the old schedule board when you load onto the schedule board um, we used to take take uh, the user to the beginning of the day 
but now uh, we we got feedback from different customers because it makes sense for us to land the user uh, uh, in the current time of the day. So now every time as a user, when you load into the schedule board, the car, you would be uh, landed in a view in such a way that you would be able to see the current timeline of the day. And you don't have to search for the current time of the day. A uh, few other things that we improved is a sticky header up here. As you can see here, as you move to the right, the until the next day comes in, uh, the uh, the date header is uh, stuck to the left and you'd be able to see that it is uh, uh, shown. In the old schedule board, there were uh, scenarios where you wouldn't have any date header and you would have to scroll back and forth to see uh, what is the actual date or uh, the time of the, uh, I mean, date that you are scrolling uh, scrolling through. So that's one uh, other minor improvement that we put. Um, and we've uh, added a lot of the details from the old schedule board, like the resource capacity, the number of uh, the hour, the number of hours the resource is booked for. All of those existing functionalities are filled into the uh, this uh, existing uh, the new schedule board. Um, another. Another feature that would also brought your bring your attention to is uh, uh, is the map view. As you can see, uh, we've uh, we've added the map view to the schedule board in this release, where you would be able to open up uh, uh, the map view. Previously, map view was placed on the left hand side along with the filter panel. Now we see that. Uh, at times, it makes it difficult for you to use a filter panel along with a map view and the grid in place. So we move the map panel to the right. However, if you uh, if your dispatchers need more real estate, you could uh, uh, keep expanding and uh, use all of that space for the map area. So the new map area is going to be on your right hand side where you could uh, still continue to use uh, all other panels in the schedule board. Uh, now, as you see here, uh, you have your resources uh, with a specific route selected for that day. Now, when you choose a specific resource, uh, we draw the route and then we show and highlight that route. One specific feedback that we received from a lot of customers is that uh, uh, the routes, the color of the routes, uh, sometimes when there are too many resources in the uh, visible area, the colors get too close in color and it's too different, difficult to differentiate them. We tried, we put in an effort to uh, make these colors as differentiable as possible. Uh, uh, and uh, now you could also see that uh, the color of the route is also the same as the color of the bookings that the resources, uh, uh, resources going to do on that day. Uh, we, you can also see that the resource icons have been reused from the resource here. So all of your technicians on the route would be shown with their uh, uh, resource icon of the face pipe. Uh, now, you, the one major improvement that we did in the route uh, uh, is, is that uh, the uh, booking numbering or the booking sequencing, you would be able to see what is the first booking in the day, second booking in the day, and third booking in the day for that specific resource. As you see here, um, in this specific case, uh, 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 you, were, you would be able to see Brady's uh, bookings on uh, three, nine, uh, and they're from uh, one, two, and three, and four. Um, the reason three is not showing is basically they're too close to uh, one another. If you expand on, you would be able to see uh, the other bookings as well. Uh, there are other improvements that we are actually working on uh, in the map view, which we will be pushing as part of the April 2021 release. Uh, the, the requirement pin uh, pins are still going to be shown on the map. You could drag and drop onto the grid to create a booking, or you can even drag a requirement route uh, or a resource route to create a booking onto an adjacent requirement. Uh, these are something which are currently in progress, and these would be available in the April 2021 release. Uh, now that now that we spoke about the map view, uh, also uh, I think I should uh, talk about some of the performance improvements that we have done on the map. We tried to look on the existing implementation of the schedule board, and we discovered a uh, we discovered and uh, tried to follow a lot of best practices to load the right data here and uh, cut down on any unnecessary calls to improve the performance of the map view so that the loading is faster, not just on the map view, and, uh, but on the whole schedule board so that uh, there are no unnecessary calls um, which, which, which could uh, uh, deteriorate the performance of the schedule board.
uh, that's that's about the map view. As as we spoke, uh, we brought in the other functionalities existing from the old schedule board, which is the resource card. You would still be able to see the resources and the uh, the booking percentages, etc., are also shown on uh, on the schedule board. Uh, so those are some of the improvements that uh, uh, that we brought in on the hours view, weeks view, and months view. Um, now that uh, we've seen some of these improvements, let's let's get to the next uh, next feature, which is the embedded optimizer. Embedded optimizer is a feature which is currently available for uh, uh, public preview for all of the existing RSO customers. Uh, they would be able to use, uh, uh, all of the existing RSO customers would be able to use the embedded optimizer uh, uh, feature. And uh, the FS customers who do not have an RSO add-on purchased, uh, they would be uh, able to enroll into a private preview so that they can test, evaluate uh, these features and provide us feedback on these features uh, even before it uh, is available for everyone. Um, so let, let's start with the, uh, the embedded optimizers. Basically, the idea of embedded optimizer, if you have already seen or uh, used this in the um, uh, in the October 2020 release, uh, that's great. The idea of this feature is to uh, bring in native integration into the schedule board so that the dispatcher who's working on a specific tab, uh, he could use the RSO's capabilities without even having to learn, uh, learn a lot about RSO as a product. RSO is a very matured optimization product where you could, uh, where your organization could schedule um, uh, automated, automated scheduling runs, which run for uh, nightly, biweekly, weekly, or even uh, every hour to pick up the unscheduled work and automatically uh, schedule the work for uh, eligible uh, technicians based on the goals the scheduling goals of your organization, be it uh, maximizing the work hours of the resources or minimizing the travel time of the resources. However, what we've seen is it needs it's, it needs a, a certain amount of RSO knowledge to uh, set up the instance of RSO and then uh, uh, create all the necessary uh, rules and structures for creating the first RSO run. So we wanted to minimize that uh, uh, the curve for the dispatchers to use it. So we kind of brought in the native uh, functionality into the schedule board where you can choose one or multiple resources and then you would be able to use the functionality called suggest resources or book resources. As we said, currently in preview, you would be able to uh, select a unscheduled work order or, or a requirement and then click on suggest resources. What is it going to do is, is basically uh, send this requirements or uh, work orders information to all the way to schedule uh, RSO and uh, the scheduling engine would look for all possible uh, combinations of uh, the resources who could perform this job. Now, as we see here, it suggested uh, top three suggestions, which is basically Jorge, Edgar, Joseph, who could do this job on 310. Um, as we see, we are currently looking at uh, 39. So we pushed an improvement so that you could uh, actually see this booking on the timeline on the suggested time slot. So when you click on see on timeline, you'd be able to see the exact time slot which is being suggested. And uh, you can also click on uh, see on timeline for Edgar and the same way it would take us to that specific time or the specific time of the day where the booking is being created. So you could choose uh, either you click on this uh, uh, suggested time slot or you can click on the book button to create this booking. But let's say uh, as a dispatcher, these are not the times that you're looking for, uh, but you're looking for a time slot which is much earlier than that. You could still use uh, a different goal right from here. These are also known as optimization goals in the RSO where uh, you have to submit an optimization schedule and the, which creates an optimization request with a specific goal for the, uh, for the run. We brought that, we made, made it uh, uh, abstract and we brought it to the schedule board where you, your dispatcher, without having a prior uh, knowledge, you, they could choose these pre-created scheduling goals so that they can choose, okay, let me do ASAP scheduling, which it means that try to find the earliest time slot. And uh, when you choose a different goal, what we do is we resubmit the search to RSO and it uh, tries to suggest us the time slots, basically in this case, because of the time of the day, uh, it is suggesting these uh, these three suggestions, and you would be able to see and click book and create a booking for. Them. 
that specific uh, 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 resource. Once a booking is created, you would see that the booking is created right here, and uh, you can see that goal is you goal used is ASAP scheduling. Now, every time if you are going to use the same uh, goal, then there is a way you can change the default for uh, for the goal at a tab level. So every time you submit a run on uh, the tab, you would be able to uh, use this ASAP scheduling. So I'm going to cho cho cha change the default on this tab. And then now if I go ahead and uh, do scheduling, this time I'm going to do it a little differently. So I'm going to choose, uh, uh, let's say, a bunch of those resources because I'm going to do it in bulk and I choose these resources and then I click on suggest resources. Now what, what we are doing right here is uh, we selected a set of seven requirements and uh, uh, the system for the system we told that these are the resources whom we want to match uh, the eligibility against all these uh, seven requirements and see who's the right resources who could do this job. Our resource tries all, for all possible combinations and it tries to find uh, the bookings in such a way that bookings get scheduled as early as possible so that uh, the technician goes to the customer location as, as early as possible. As you see here, these are the set of suggested bookings. You can see them in the dotted box up here, but if you need to see them, you can click on the see on timeline and you'll be able to see those uh, uh, suggested bookings. Um, I could either uh, 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 I could either uh, uh, not select these or create these bookings, or if I think this uh, schedule works out for me, I'm, I can go ahead and click uh, book all, which is going to create all those seven bookings for me uh, at once, and then uh, the bookings get done. So that way uh, you were able to do the scheduling in bulk by using the ASAP scheduling. Like if you see all the way up here, you can still see that uh, the goal that was used here is not the default goal that was initially uh, configured for, but the ASAP goal, which we will set as a default up here. So you could use different kinds of goals, uh, basically working outside of uh, uh, the resources of the technicians who are okay to travel outside of working hours. We could set them up in such a way so that you could use them. As you see here, uh, we in the ASAP scheduling, we used uh, we used uh, the travel outside of work hours and the resources are actually reaching the customer location at 8 a.m. Uh, uh, the customer time so that they can get this job done. Um, so they're traveling outside of their work hours, uh, which is which is a great improvement considering we are able to leverage the whole of RSO engine to use these uh, uh, configurations and con uh, configurability. If we do it with a uh, manual schedule board like a schedule assistant, uh, currently there is no way we could uh, schedule the bookings to the resources so that the resources travel prior to their start of the working hours so that at, uh, at dot 8 a.m. when their work hours start, they are at the customer's location to get the job done. Um, so that's that's uh, that's a way uh, we could do multiple work orders uh, scheduled at one time, but, but let's say your dispatcher is using this uh, quite a few times and uh, you see that it is aligning with your scheduling goal, you don't even have to suggest these resources, but you could directly go ahead and create the bookings so that uh, the one layer of uh, input can also be reduced and save some time for the dispatchers. Now you could choose as many requirements as you want, and uh, all you have to do is uh, click on book resources. What is it going to do is it is going to uh, look at all the selected resource uh, requirements look at the available uh, availability of these resources and the uh, eligibility of these resources and it is going to create those bookings for uh, uh, for all of those uh, all of those uh, resources without the dispatcher having to give any input uh, you, uh, now again rso is leveraged like pretty much in this uh, uh, the other scenarios that we've discussed so far because we've passed on so many requirements, it is going to take a minute or two for it to even go run, find the right matching, and then create the bookings directly. But if you uh, if you look at uh, uh, if you look at the total time it takes for the technician to make those decisions manually and create those bookings, it would be uh, there would be a lot of time the dispatcher could save from this uh, from this aspect, and uh, uh, it it. He could the dispatcher could reuse this time for his uh, uh, other other aspects of the day, and uh, he could focus on the other uh, other aspects of the day. It with with uh, the embedded optimizer taking out the pain in uh, the manual decisions and making these uh, bookings work. 
and 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 uh, uh, your scheduling goals are always met you could maximize your workout productivity so on and so forth all the benefits that come with rso so now a dispatcher could uh, see uh, could just clear up his uh, uh, unscheduled queue with uh, with a few clicks based on uh, based on the configuration of their uh, rso i don't even have a work order to schedule when when we started we have had around uh, uh, 70 requirements to get scheduled and there are uh, like 60 requirements to get scheduled and they're all scheduled now. Uh, those are some of the improvements that we've done on the schedule board. Now, now I would take a few minutes to talk about uh, the work hours control. This is uh, one of those less talked, uh, less, less talked about features for this uh, wave. In, in more, many of my conversations with the customers, I've seen that customers uh, need Customers and their employees have different patterns of the work hours uh, uh, for their resources. And uh, one of the things that we've uh, uh, introduced in this wave is uh, is a is a feature where um, where your organizations would be able to have uh, different working hours for different days of a week in a recurring pattern. Uh, this was something that was available in our very old uh, work hours control, but now that is brought back and uh, it is even better today where you could choose, um, where you can see here that uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays, there is a different work hours. Uh, all the Mondays of a week, uh, there is a different work hours. All the Tuesdays, you have a different uh, pattern. There are no working hours on Wednesday. On Thursdays, there is a different work hours recurrence. And then the, on Fridays, there is a different work hours recurrence. The way it is created is you would be able to see it from here. Uh, previously, we used to have a never a repeat pattern of every day, repeat pattern of every every week. But now we also have a new pattern called custom. When you choose custom, you would be able to see uh, these work hours in these days, and you would be able to uh, select, unselect, and each of those days you would be able to enter uh, uh, your own breaks, your own splits, uh, split of different capacities, uh, add a split, and you say, let's say three as the capacity, apply that here. You'd be able to see a summary on this page where you'll see, okay, working hours for Monday is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., but we also have a, a quick count of how many breaks that days have, if there are any splitting of uh, capacities happening on each of those days, and you'd be able to save that, and those changes will reflect back on the screen. Uh, this way, it helps a lot of companies to uh, use a recurring pattern defined in such a way that you don't have to create single day single day events on each of those uh, days to define those hours. Mm -hmm.